So yesterday, I covered the Zeebrugger map and how it's likely to become a perfect combination of infantry and vehicle combat. Heligoland has had its issues with getting that balance right over the last couple of patches, but I think DICE has now struck the right note and improved infantry combat on this map significantly. Now alongside those infantry changes, DICE has introduced more destroyers, two extra across the map, one per team, they've added the C-Class airship, and they've added Dreadnought vs Dreadnought combat onto Heligoland Bight as well, in the hopes of improving the naval combat overall. I, and many others, felt that the naval combat in Battlefield 1 lacked depth, no pun intended, and building an entire map around it didn't appear to be working out so well. But their changes, in practice, do now feel like they've fixed the issue. There are now so many different naval vehicles in the water at any one time that the chances of being fully focused on by a huge vehicle is much, much smaller. This leads to you spending a bit more time alive each life, and you're not simply taking part in a spawn-die, spawn-die simulator, which, trust me, was really, really boring after about half a round. The extra destroyers, that adds a further element of side objectives to the map, and the Dreadnought vs Dreadnought moments, they just completely distract some of the players, leaving other parts of the map really open to being exploited. Torpedo boats still get crushed by destroyers, and the C-Class airship does get picked off quite quickly by enemy planes, and their ability to stay out of harm's way is much greater than the C-Class airship, just simply because they can move much faster. But the vehicle combat overall now feels much better than what it did before. DICE has also added textures to the map, so what you're looking at right now is almost exactly what the map will look like when it gets added to the main game later on in January. And I've got to say, whatever magic DICE is using, I want in on it, because somehow the Turning Tides DLC appears to be just a cut above the rest in terms of beauty and detail. If you crank the settings up high enough on PC, there are some points where you could take a screenshot and ask, is this actually real, or is it still a video game? The map looks incredible, and having textures enabled here on Heligoland has had the same effect that I felt when Cape Hells and Achi Baba were first textured as well. Because you no longer stick out like a sore thumb against a grey background all the time, you find so much more natural cover than you did before, and gameplay flows much more smoothly. But let's look at these infantry changes then. All of these are based on community feedback. DICE has transformed one side of the main island to incorporate more space for soldiers to fight it out on the ground. Now from the D flag, where the lighthouse is, all the way down to the F flag now, where the beach U-boat is, DICE has remodeled the cliff face to widen the area that infantry players can already run along. They've added a few pillboxes spaced along the shoreline as you run from the D flag to the F flag, and that gives you a little bit more cover. A new cove has been added halfway along between those two flags, and it's become its own flag in the process, and a small tunnel has been implemented through a section of rock that juts out from the main island. You can still use the beach to flank around that tunnel as well, so you won't see a breakdown in gameplay there if infantry do clash together, but I can't help but thinking that DICE added this tunnel as a sort of a, a nod towards the feedback from the community. Now many players wanted to see a full tunnel system implemented onto Heligoland Bight, but according to DICE, having that had a bit too much of an effect on the naval combat, and it actually made the naval combat worse because more people were spawning in as infantry to use the tunnels. And of course, this map was built for naval gameplay, and you wouldn't want to distract from that by adding too much infantry infantry space. Not only that, but something tells me there might have been some memory limitations with adding too much to the map on top of all of those new vehicles like the new destroyers that have come in and the dreadnoughts as well, so adding more infantry fighting locations might have pushed dice over the memory limit. It is only a very small tunnel, but I think it was DICE's way of letting us know that they did hear our feedback, it's just they couldn't implement it at this time. 
Now beyond that new cove that DICE has implemented, there is a further skinnier beach and cliff base that can be used by infantry to run all the way along to the F flag, but DICE has placed more boat spawns along this section as well. This is likely to encourage more people to use vehicles a little bit more, rather than running everywhere, which not only takes longer, but leaves you more vulnerable. The entire point of this map is it represents a huge and significant naval battle from World War One. so even though DICE has made some changes to improve the infantry experience, they're still trying to subtly remind you that this is a naval warfare map and you might want to get involved with the battles going out on the water. The changes that DICE has made here really means that as an infantry soldier you've now got plenty of choice if you want to spawn in on foot rather than in a vehicle. And the issue before wasn't so much that infantry didn't matter, because to an extent if infantry weren't on the land capturing certain flags, then if you left it to boats it might be a little bit more tricky to actually maintain control of the flag. The issue was, it's just that certain locations really weren't that interesting, but DICE has now bolstered all of that, so if you spawn in pretty much anywhere on the map as an infantry soldier, you've got a way to get around so you can find the next position and engage in some gunfights as well. So overall they've improved everything for the infantry side of things, but it's not encroaching on the naval combat either, and I think that's probably the best situation that you can have here on Heligoland Bight. Beyond that, there are a couple of other changes that DICE has made. There has been a reduction in the number of planes active at once, and I think that was made to offset the introduction of the two new airships, one for each team, and adjustments to the capture areas have been made for each flag so that the airship can now capture all of the flags on the map. The capture zone now extends right up into the sky so the airship can sit above the flag and capture it, although you might really not want to do this for too long considering how much of a target you actually present yourself as if you're just sitting still in a huge airship. Lastly, the Dreadnoughts, they don't become immediately available as soon as the round starts. They spawn in on a timer after the round begins, and once they are destroyed, another one will not spawn unless it is a true behemoth spawn, in which case it would spawn for the team losing once they fall too far behind with enough score. Some people on the previous video were a little bit concerned about how many Dreadnoughts you would get. You only get one if it gets destroyed. The only way you're going to get another one is if you are losing by a certain amount of points. Heligoland has gone from being a map I was really, really concerned about before Christmas to one that I'm really looking forward to playing when it launches later on in January. It won't ever be my favourite map in Battlefield 1, simply because I like infantry combat so much, but I really can appreciate what DICE has done here as a result of good community feedback and good development from DICE as well. Ultimately, it is DICE that gets to choose how a map should look, how the gameplay should be balanced and how it should feel, and what the main focus points of the map are. But here I think the community has really helped DICE improve the map overall quite significantly from its first form. The infantry locations on the map are now much more robust as a result of feedback that stated infantry gameplay just didn't really feel too great, and the overall increase in naval vehicle options like the added dreadnoughts and the C-class airship again came as a result of community feedback. Proper level changes were made here, you know, with the tunnel being implemented. That's not something that we've seen really on the CTE before, or since it started running for Battlefield 1. If the CTE hadn't been running, then these changes would likely not have happened. The map may have been released as it was before the tunnel was added, or before the dreadnoughts were even thought of, and then added into the map. We could have had a very different and likely very worse map than what we have right now. And that is proper proof that community feedback mixed with open transparent development really does work wonders for Battlefield 1. There's no denying that this map, or at least these two, Heligoland by and Zeebrugge, are introducing some really new flavours of gameplay into Battlefield 1, totally different from what we've had before, and the fact that that has all been improved by community feedback I think is really, really awesome. But there you are, that's Heligoland by and likely one of the last updates to be made before this makes it into the patch later on in January. Now we still 
still don't have a release date for this patch yet, but we do have an extensive list of changes that will be going into the January patch, including some much more accurate information about the weapon balance patch as well. So what I'm going to be doing in tomorrow's video is going through in depth all of the changes that we know of so far that will be coming to the January patch. That won't be a full list until the patch is actually released, but the one that's now on the CTE Reddit pages, that one is very, very accurate. Thank you very much for watching today. Let me know your thoughts on these changes to Heligoland by down below in the comments section, and I'll be down there reading and replying to as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.